You know, in all the years that I've been a builder and a renovator, I've learned a few things along the way. Call them the tricks of the trade. We have another installment of those tips that I've learned from professionals and things that I've learned myself, and I wanna share them with you so you can get professional results every single time. You know how you know if you hired a good carpenter? Well, he has lipstick in his toolbox. I wish I remembered who taught me this trick, but this one really does work. Say you have a door like this, that when you go to close it, it doesn't latch. You know, the knob just doesn't latch uh, onto there, and you're not quite sure how to adjust it. Well, you use a little lipstick to help guide the way. What you do is on this little latch on the doorknob right here, you take a little lipstick. I like the really red stuff. You wanna get that lipstick on there and kind of build it up. You really wanna get a bunch of this lipstick right on that latch of the doorknob. Now what I want you to do is pull that knob open so that the latch is depressed inside the door, close the door where it has to go, and then release it. You open up the door and you'll see the mark that was left by the lipstick. This is gonna give you a reference point on where you have to actually move this strike plate. Take a tape measure and measure against the uh, door stop here. You can see it's gotta come over about an inch. You'll loosen these two screws. You may have to do a little wood puttying so that it lines up perfectly. You reset it, and now the door will latch perfectly. Who knew you could do so much with a tube of lipstick? I learned this trick in my early 20s on a job site from a painter named Julius. He told me, Lou, if you're ever painting with darker colors, you wanna tint your primer. Let's say you're gonna do a wall in a dark blue or a dark brown. It takes several coats to get that depth of color. And when you're a professional painter, time is money. By tinting the primer, that's the way you speed things up and still get the good end results. Now, for the most part, you can have this done at the paint store, but if you wanna do it yourself, you can take any kind of latex primer that we have right here and a bottle of tint. So we've got that blue color, and this is a bottle of tint that you can buy at a paint store or a hardware store. They come in all different shades. I'm gonna go ahead and take that primer right here and pour some inside this container. All right. Now, I'm not looking to match the color. I'm just looking to tint the primer. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that blue. Doesn't take much. And now I'm gonna start to mix that up. Make sure that it's well mixed, and then go ahead and pour it into your pan. Not bad. Again, remember, most paint stores, hardware stores, they'll do this for you, but I'm just showing you the trick on how you can do it. Then load up that roller. This is just your primer, okay? And now start priming. So you're just gonna put that primer, it actually looks pretty good, and really make it nice and even. Now, when you put that dark color over the tinted primer, you're gonna have a great looking paint job. If you have to do any kind of fastening on a piece of wood towards the end of it, whether you're using nails or screws, it can be problematic because you can split it. But I have a little trick of the trade that can help you. Remember, wood is a resilient material. Uh, this is a two by six, and so the grain runs lengthwise. And when you get to the end of it, if you're doing any kind of nailing, you run the risk of splitting the wood. An old time trick is to take a nail like this eight penny nail, turn it upside down, and blunt the end of the nail. That's gonna help not be so sharp when it goes in. And when you get to the end of it here, and you start to hammer it in, it doesn't split. Now, if you're using screws, this is another area where you have to be careful, and I recommend that what you do is you pre-drill it. Take a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the screws you wanna use, and if you get onto the end of a board like this, take that cordless drill, pre-drill that, and I have a screw bit here that I'm gonna use. And now with my screw. Follow these little tips and the wood will do exactly what you want it to do. So these are just a few of the things that I've learned over the years. I'm sure that you have a few tricks of the trade. How about you share them with me? 
send them to HowSmartsTV.com, and maybe next time we'll share them with the rest of our audience.